Hi, welcome to This Week in Ames. I'm Susan Guiazda. On today's show, we'll check in with Ames Electric Services. My guest today is Donald Kamm, Director of Ames Electric Services. Don, welcome to the show. Good morning and thank you. Well, it's been a while since we've talked to you and, and as usual, lots of things are happening in, in your field. Um, big changes on the horizon for the Ames Power Plant. Absolutely. Um, late in November, uh, we came to Council and asked them uh, fundamentally if we could convert the power plant. It currently burns coal and refuse-derived fuel. And uh, through a detailed study, we determined that it, it, it makes uh, better sense to convert it from coal fire generation to natural gas fire generation. So this has been a long time in coming. Um, the whole uh, administration at the federal level has been looking at emissions, looking at how we as a country can reduce emissions, and that obviously affected power plants across the country. Absolutely. Um, there are ways to meet these new requirements um, by adding a lot of equipment if you want to remain on coal. The alternative is to convert to natural gas and you can still meet those same requirements. So those were in uh, response to Environmental Protection Agency standards? Yes. Um, there are rules that look at, uh, one is called the, the MATS rule, Mercury and Air Toxic Standards rule. That was really the biggest one that, that we looked at. And uh, there was two ways to meet that. One was to add additional equipment to our plant as it sits today. The other is to convert it to natural gas. And after a lot of analysis, um, our recommendation to Council was to convert to natural gas. And Council on uh, November 12th approved that. So we're starting that process now. So at the end of this past year, you got the results from your consultant and then took that information public. Well, how did that, um, how did the public perceive the information? Well, we actually had uh, two different public input sessions. Uh, one we held here at City Hall, the second one we held out at uh, Iowa State. Um, got a lot of good feedback. Um, some of the things that I, I took from that meeting or those meetings, everybody was real pleased that we were moving away from coal and to natural gas. The other big piece that I heard was, um, let's not forget about renewable energy. And it, it was interesting that a lot of people don't understand just how much renewable energy we already have in our generation mix. We do have a, a, a long-term contract on wind, and that's producing about 15, 16% of the energy that we use right now. The other piece is because we burn refuse-derived fuel, that is, in essence, also a renewable energy, and that provides us about another 5% of our energy consumption. So that was one of the things I think that a lot of people were pleased to hear that we are doing today, and uh, they encourage us to continue to look at that and, and start looking at possibly solar panels or more wind, um, other sustainable um, So even things. being more aggressive on the renewables. Absolutely. And, uh, our immediate needs right now are to meet the, the upcoming EPA standards, and uh, once we do that, we will be uh, looking at other, other things like solar farm, uh, another maybe more wind, other renewable resources that uh, can be looked at. Right. Another important part of the consultant study was the idea of not going away from the resource recovery plant and mm -hmm. that idea of that waste to energy. We were first in the nation. So keeping the resource recovery plant is very important to the citizens of Ames. Tell me about the resource recovery plant and the role that it plays in producing electricity. Sure. One of the things that allows us to do is, is with us burning coal, we can reduce the amount of coal that we're burning by supplementing that with what we call refuse-derived fuel. Basically, that's our processed garbage from not only Ames, but from across the county. Uh, so as we're burning coal, we add refuse-derived fuel into the boilers. As we convert the, the units from coal to natural gas, one of the uh, big questions that we had to ask was, can refuse-derived fuel continue to be burned with the new fuel source? And uh, in talking, uh, the consultant looked at that, in talking with the, the uh, vendor that provided us our boiler originally, and they said that it could continue to be fired with natural gas. So that's a, that's a very good thing. So we continue that process even though we're converting the plant. And by having the Resource Recovery Center, it is true that Ames does not have a landfill, and uh, the amount of product we send to landfill is significantly lower than other communities of our size. Th there's really two components. That's one of them. The other thing is, is a lot of people say, well, Ames, you don't recycle. Mm -hmm. But because we're bringing all of the garbage to the resource recovery plant, 
they do a much higher level of recycling than uh, processes where you'd put out separate bins at your home. So a lot of people forget about that. that yeah, we our do. recycling rate is about 75%. It's really much higher than a traditional recycling rate. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, some other things are on the horizon. I mean, obviously, the conversion of the power plant is huge, mm -hmm. and the timeline for that would be over several years? Absolutely. Uh, what happens on, the, on that now is, now that we've gotten the decision to go to natural gas, it's not a simple conversion. Um, we're right now looking at uh, finding an engineering firm that can work with us to do a lot of the detailed design. How do we get the gas through the plant? How do we convert the boilers themselves from how we burn coal to natural gas? A lot of that's going to be studied over the next 6 to 12 months. Then we've got to go out, engineer it, design it, build it, and then get it installed. Our timeline right now is to meet um, our requirements by April of 2016 seems like a long time but there's a tremendous amount of work and that's inside the plant the other critical piece is to uh, power the plant with natural gas it will take a tremendous amount of natural gas more gas than the entire city uses um, to heat it to heat during the winter season so we're uh, looking at two different ways to meet that one would be to uh, build a natural gas line from a major gas line that's uh, uh, located up in Story City. The other alternative is to work with the local gas company, uh, Alliant Energy, and see if we can't partner in some way on um, building a line from Story City um, to Ames and then into the power plant. So we're looking at that from both, both directions just to see what would be the best way to go on behalf of our customers. So really in the next two years you have a two-pronged approach of um, getting the power plant itself ready for the conversion and then getting the power supply to the power plant. Or actually the, the fuel supply mm -hmm. to the power plant, yeah. correct. So a lot, a lot in the next 24 <laughs> months. Yes it is. And we have all the other work that continues. Um, we still have our 161, our, our high voltage transmission line that we've almost completed down to northeast Ankeny. Uh, we and that was to add redundancy into the system, so uh, we would be less susceptible to outages. Yes, and that, that should be in service by March 1 of 2014, so Another we're Another milestone to that. event, excellent. Yep, looking forward to that too. Well, speaking of March, we have some other things coming up. Um, Ames Electric Services has been a longtime supporter of what used to be called the Energy Fair and is now the Eco Fair, coming up on Saturday, March 29th. Tell uh, me a little actually bit. Actually, on the 30th. Oh, March 30th. Yep, but that's okay. And yeah, it's it's bigger than the Energy Fair. It is the Eco Fair. So we, we talk not only electricity, but we look at water, wastewater, uh, stormwater runoff. Uh, we have resource recovery is involved in that, public works, water, the library usually mm -hmm. shows up. And it's a great time for uh, citizens of Ames and, and people from around the area to come and hear about new things that are happening not only at the city, but uh, what landscape architects are doing these days to uh, control water runoff and things like that. It's, uh, this I think is our third annual and it always turns out to be a very, very good time. Yeah, it's a great event. It's, of course, at no cost. There mm -hmm. is um, activity for all ages, educational opportunities, uh, learn more about. I love the rain barrels mm -hmm. are always out on display. It's about uh, time to start thinking about spring and gardening. Mm -hmm. You mentioned landscaping, so much going on. Yep. And uh, the energy guy will be there to answer questions about all of the demand side management programs, lighting. Um, you can sign up for uh, audits of your home, mm -hmm. energy audits of your home, and just, just it, it, it turns out to be a really fun day. Yeah, you, now you mentioned lighting. One other thing I wanted to ask you about before we, um, before we lose you for today. <laughs> uh, lighting, um, incandescence lighting, there's, uh, incandescent lighting will be phased out, certain uh, levels of incandescent lighting phased mm -hmm. out uh, beginning January 2014, really opens the door for people to perhaps upgrade some of the lighting mm -hmm. in their homes. When incandescent lights came out, you had those 60 waters, those 100 waters and things like that. The, the first breakthrough then became the, uh, the compact fluorescence where you could really save some energy there. And now with compact fluorescence, there is uh, the LED, light emitting diode is what it stands for. And it, it's amazing just how much energy you can save even within your home if you change out three or four light bulbs that you typically have on during the, you know, during the day or, or uh, for extended periods. So as those incandescent light bulbs in your home maybe burn out and you are not able to replace them with the same thing, I think it's time to think about upgrading to LED. The drawback of course is that LEDs are significantly more expensive. Uh, but we have a solution for that. 
within our uh, demand side management, within our rebate program, we offer a 30% rebate on LED lights. So if you go out and, and have to buy a light bulb for $10, we'll give you a $3 rebate on that. So through the Smart Energy High Efficiency Lighting Program, uh, a Ames Electric Services customer can then request that rebate. Absolutely, and we have forms online at cityofames.org under Smart Energy, or you can come to our office, we have forms there, and we just uh, look for a proof of purchase, and uh, we'll get a rebate check out to you in probably two to three weeks. So now you have to be a resident of Ames and on a customer of Ames Electric Services, but yes. is there a limit to the number of light bulbs that you can turn in? Well, um, if you kind of walked in and said, I wanted to rebate 100 light bulbs, we'd kind of question just how many light bulbs you're using in your house, but we don't have any specific limit. Uh, our goal is, is to get those older incandescents and even compact fluorescents can be changed out and get those into our system, reducing our energy consumption and, and saving us all money and helping the environment. Now those compact fluorescents, a lot of people call them the curly, curly Q light bulbs. Mm -hmm. They do have a little bit of a disposal issue. Where can people bring burned out compact okay. fluorescent light bulbs? The best place to bring the compact fluorescent light bulbs is over to Resource Recovery. Um, there is a little bit of mercury found in some of them and uh, Resource Recovery has a process where they can get those recycled um, and get that mercury kept out of the waste stream. So don't just throw them in the garbage. Absolutely. Well done, I know you're busy. Obviously you got a lot on your plate, especially in the next 24 months. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> but thank you again for stopping by and visiting with us. All right, thanks for the hot cocoa. Anytime. Well, if you've noticed the snow outside, this is just a good time to remind you that uh, after the end of the snowfall, there is 10 daylight hours to get those walks cleaned. We wanna keep Ames pedestrian friendly. Also, if you live on a snow route and the snow ordinance is in effect, make sure to move your vehicle to avoid ticketing or towing. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching, and tune in next week to This Week in Ames.